praise you, Jesus. Okay, so let's just pray over the offering real quick. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just love you and bless you for every single seed that's been sown tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. We receive it, Father. Lord, I pray that you would receive it, Lord. We have sown out of lack, Father. And we ask you, Father, for multiplication and that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. In Jesus' name, that you remember us, that you remember Jubilee, Father. That we love you and bless you and thank you for everything you've done for us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. All righty. You want to go first? Yeah, go first. Hi, you guys. Oh, my gosh. I love seeing you all. Um, I Just during worship, I felt like uh, the Lord wanted me to share a testimony. And um, this is because he is holy. And he is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And we have a lot of sick people among us that aren't here tonight, obviously, for obvious reasons. And um, I felt like the Lord really wanted me to just give a little testimony. Um, a good friend of mine uh, in the church, went to, when I went to the Malibu Vineyard years and years ago, uh, Gary Bentley and Karen Bentley were, uh, Karen called me that morning and I was on my way somewhere and she said, Karen, Gary's in the hospital and he's getting his leg amputated tomorrow morning. Well, that morning, I happened to have been in prayer already and the Lord gave me a scripture, faith worketh through love. And I knew that I knew that that word was for Gary. I mean, he was a precious man of God. And so I thought, oh, okay, where are you? And she said, we're at the Ronald Reagan in Westwood. I said, okay, I'm where? And she said, we're in ICU. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm coming right now. So I turned around and I went to the Ronald Reagan UCLA ICU. And I looked at Gary and I looked at his leg and I saw that one leg was twice the size of the other. And he had a black foot and it was green all the way going right to the middle of his shin. And I looked at it for a second, but I didn't look at it too long because I, I knew not to because I would have focused on the ailment versus focused on the word that was greater than the ailment. And um, so I said, Gary, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Now, he's not so excited. And, um, and I was like, I'm so excited. But the Lord gave me a word this morning and I know it's for you. And I said, can I pray for you? And, you know, yeah, he was, he kind of rolled his eyes at me a little bit. I'm like, sure. Because he's scheduled for surgery the next morning and I thought I didn't let it bother me at all because I just knew that word was for Gary and so I said well, Gary let me just pray for you and so I prayed for him and um, and I was just and I when I left I left as same as I came I left as excited I didn't see anything but I knew God was going to do it. I just knew he was going to do it. So anyway, uh, Karen called me at 8 o'clock the next morning. And she said, you're not going to believe what happened. We're leaving the hospital. They didn't have to amputate his leg. So you guys, I just, I know that we have loved ones and uh, friends that are um, sick with cancer and they're really sick and they may even roll their eyes at you when you tell them you, that faith worketh through love because they're feeling the symptom but I would challenge all of us to go into all creation and preach the good news 
and pray for, lay hands on the sick because he is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And so I would like to pray for, I, I know that, and if anybody has any loved ones that wants to come and let's just agree. You know, Lenny, you, um, Lenny um, gave, uh, took the offering and shared her uh, beautiful revelation on Abraham two Sundays ago. And if you haven't seen it, watch it because it's really good revelation. But she said something that I haven't stopped thinking about, about a holy nation. Yeah. I haven't stopped thinking about that. You guys, we are a holy nation. We really, really, really are a holy nation. And when we come together, one mind, one accord, in agreement with the Word of God. Um, and I know Peter's quoted one of my favorite scriptures about girding up the loins of your mind. When we actually gird up the loins of our mind. And loins, loins is procreation. It's pro, yeah, it's procreation. It's procreative power. So when you gird up your mind, the mind of Christ, and we come in agreement with the Word of God, because His Word is true. Whether you see it manifesting in the earth or not, it's not that God's Word is not true. If you pray for somebody and they die, and I have. I've had a lot of miracles, and I have prayed for some people that have died, and it's been sad. But it doesn't stop me from praying. It doesn't stop me from believing. So... Let's believe in spite of what we see. Blessed is he who believes in spite of seeing. So let's believe God for the miracles for Becky Ferris, for Priscilla, in the name of Jesus. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our sister, Becky Ferris, right now, Father. We come in agreement with the awesome, powerful, beautiful word of God. And we believe the finished work is the finished work. When you looked up into heaven and you said, it is finished. It is finished. Death, hell, and the grave and all infirmity in the name of Jesus. We bite you in the name of Jesus off of Becky Ferris. Get off of her life now in the name of Jesus. We bite you. His name is above shingles. His name is above cancer. His name is above all irritable bowel. His name is above all um, autoimmune diseases in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord over Jubilee. Jesus Christ is Lord over the body and all the saints in the name of Jesus. So Father, we thank you for who we are in Christ. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So we come in agreement right now and we say, Becky Ferris, Priscilla, be healed by the stripes of Jesus. The finished work is the finished work and it is finished in Jesus' name. And we all say amen to that. Yes and amen. We come in agreement. Yes and amen. Yes, that you're the same today. Oh, and Pastor Brian, Father, Lord, right now we just... Um, Father, I just thank you. It's the blood of Jesus that goes through our veins, that the kingdom of heaven is inside of us. So we curse the infirmity coming against Pastor Brian in the name of Jesus. And even Mac, Father, we thank you, Father, for resurrection life over Mac McCoy in the name of Jesus. And anybody else that's out there in Jubilee, we love you and we say, in the name of Jesus Christ, the name that is above every name, we decree and declare healing over you in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for your love for this body. We just thank you, Father, the greatest, greatest gift, Father. And Lord, we just lift ourselves up to you. And we ask, Father, we ask that we would know what it really means to be a holy nation. Father, that we would know that we know what it means to partake of a holy nation. And we see ourselves seated with Christ far above all principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. So right now we just draw a bloodline around this congregation and of what you're going to do here tonight. And we bind all principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness in the name of Jesus. 
We decree and declare Jesus Christ is Lord over this house. And that there is no weapon formed against Jubilee that shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heirs of the servants of the Lord. So we bless you, Father. And we thank you for what you are going to do here tonight. And we decree and declare unity in the spirit of the living God. In the name of Jesus. Goliath, they could only come up to the blood drops. That word, whatever it is, it means boundary of blood drops. So we, I found that in the scripture, that there is scriptural reference for drawing a bloodline. We draw the bloodline of Jesus Christ round about our households, and we call in our prodigals in Jesus' name, and we are not okay until they come in, into the kingdom of the living God. And we right now claim our kids sold for the kingdom of God. We claim your souls, oh children, for the kingdom of the living God. We reject Satan right now on your behalf. We reject addiction. We reject every form of sin and lust of the flesh in Jesus' mighty name on your behalf. We intercede for you. We intercede for you that you lay down your life and surrender to the Lord and you come forth in wholeness and completeness in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for salvation to the uttermost for every one of our kids. And not one of them will be lost. Not one of them will be lost, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you for that, Lord. That you would just uproot and remove the idolatry of social media, Father, and all the distractions in the name of you, Jesus, through that, uh, through this younger generation, Father that they would have eyes and eyes for you alone, Father. Father, that you you say nobody can come to the Father, least you draw them. Draw them unto yourselves, Lord. Draw them unto yourself, Lord. In Jesus' name, draw them, Father. I were running over here to get to the service and we went to get a bite to eat and uh, you guys know what it is to feel like when you don't have your cell phone or your checkbook or your Bible <laughs> well I said to her come on honey we have to run home after dinner here and and I got I don't have my cell phone I have my checkbook I don't have my Bible she said oh, that's okay we'll we'll figure it out so came so I figured okay I have to have a Bible it's a sword you know in in the days of the Bible back in Christ time they always had they always said have your sword always take your sword with you so I found this one here on the on the table over near near lost and found so Rosie I if you're wondering why that Bible's missing I have it temporarily it's amplified Isaiah 61 the reason I want to read this is because um, I want to share a story like yours to confirm and to uh, affirm and to uh, enforce what you were talking about, Karen, about the healing of that person you prayed for with his leg. <clears throat> and I was listening to the video of our Christmas party uh, last Wednesday today. And by the way, Diane, you did a great job as usual of emceeing that the Christmas party, as well as all the other people involved in the ones who cooked and prepared, set up the tables. What a beautiful job, Al Allie, and setting up all the host and everything. And the money box back there and the gifts were beautiful. It shows it on the video, though, if you guys watch the video, the gifts that they were giving and the money box. And as I, I really especially wanted to see it because I wanted to hear again what Miranda read or said. You remember Miranda? read that thing about how many people uh, are at this time very happy and there's other people that are sad. They're going through suffering like you were talking about, um, Karen. And I, I was talking to my wife about dinner tonight about uh, how our families, she growing up, how they celebrated Christmas and how we celebrated Christmas in our Russian household. And uh, I just began to realize that there are other people that didn't have much to remember about Christmas. And there are a lot of people that 
hurt during this time of year. I just recovered from a, a stomach virus today. As I, for the first time in a few days, I've been feeling really good. And I realize as other people, as you were alluding to, Karen, that we need to pray for, and certainly the ones that you've mentioned already that are part of her congregation. But the scripture says, the spirit of the Lord, Jesus came and read this, and then he said, this is fulfilled. Not it will be fulfilled, but it is fulfilled. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And that's upon us too, guys, because we've been deputized by Christ. Christian means a little Christ. Because the Lord has anointed and qualified me to preach the gospel of good tidings to the meek, the poor, and afflicted. You get that? To humble people, to poor people, and to people that have been afflicted with what? Sadness, pain, physical healing, physical needs, adversity in their life. He has sent me to bind up and heal the brokenhearted. There are a lot of people that are brokenhearted during this time. They're separated from loved ones that the enemy has created a distance between them. They don't have the celebration of Christmas like they would want it to be. Maybe their family members, one of them is going to one of the in-laws house and one's coming to their house and it's not as full as they would like it to be. Or there's a missing family member that they've been disconnected with for many years. So there's many brokenhearted people. To proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives. And I like that in the Amplified, the physical and spiritual captives. And the opening of the prison, there's a lot of people that are in prison. Prison to their own minds, schizophrenia, suicidal thoughts, thoughts of unworthiness. God can't bless me. I can't find a job. I don't have a place to live. There's one woman here that I've been told that she's living in her car now. She's. There's other people. This is a recent thing. She got out of a place with her family and they just, she can't find a place to live. She's living that when there's other people like that, living in cars. Some of them are homeless. So there's people in physical and spiritual captivity. And the opening of the prison, the prisons of their own mind and the own, their own hearts. They're living in their past. They're blaming people for this misfortune. They're victims of circumstances, but many times they're victims of their own mind and their own poor decisions. But they still need help. They still need the grace of God. And of the eyes to those who are bound, opening of the prison doors and of the eyes of those who are bound. It says in the scripture that Satan has blinded the hearts and the minds of the unbelieving. It says Paul, the scales came down from his eyes after he persecuted the church. There's a song that says, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart that I might see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Lord, open all of our eyes. Some of us, perhaps all of us are blind to a certain extent. We need our eyes daily to be open more and more to understanding you and understanding our brother, our neighbor. Peter, before you move on, can, will you please pray for, um, let's pray for the ones that need housing right now. Can you do that? Because so, Let's pray for that lady and anybody else that we know. So we pray for 
the homeless people. And I'm asking right now for the Lord to drop on us the gift of faith. Because I was sharing with Shervin and his wife, there's persistent faith that the woman had in Luke 18, and there's the faith that comes by hearing the word of God as we each day read the word. But then there's also a gift of faith, which I believe God gave you, Karen, and God gave me for my wife's friend, um, Jean Myers, when her husband hit his head and uh, ruptured his brain and they said no he won't make it through the night the Lord spoke to me I'm giving you a word of knowledge people you, Peter you have the gift of faith for Dave Myers to live and not die that was the gift of faith and it's there sometimes sometimes it's not there and sometimes it can be sustained but God gave you a gift of faith and I pray Lord that God you would gift us faith gift us the gift of faith yes, tonight Lord. for the people we've been believing for for yes. the prodigals we've been believing for for the woman that's living in, in her car and there's other many of them yes. living in their car for people that are hurting at this time mentally emotionally feeling like they've lost the loved one yes, either Lord. through relational separation or through physical problems or through mental problems Lord, I declare the gift of faith for their restoration yes, and for their healing, Father. We thank you, God, that we can beseech you and we can implore you to give them that gift of faith because it comes by grace. It comes by grace. It says, coming to the throne of grace, seeking grace in our time of need. And Lord, I prayed not only for Jubilee Church, I prayed yes. for those that were not even aware of many prodigals, Lord, for the church at large. Gift us with faith, Lord, we ask. Yes, Lord. Faith yes. in Christ. Faith as our great yes. physician. Faith for inner healing for people and yes, physical Lord. healing, yes. emotional healing, yes, Father. Lord. We release the gift of yes, faith Lord. for every one of them in Jesus' name. Every one of you, every one of us, we appropriate, we receive that gift of faith to be present in our prayers as we pray. We pray out of faith through your grace. It's released down in Jesus' name. I just kept hearing uh, the word property, and I just felt like um, anything that's been given to us that we own, whether it's houses, jobs, land, or anything that's been promised, we might not physically own it yet, but anything that's been promised, um, those prodigals returning, our houses, our pets, our family, our, our peace of mind, whatever it is, um, anything that the Lord's opened up his hand and given to us, given us stewardship over, um, I just felt like God wanted those things in any area where the enemies come like a thief, that we're just to call that back into our hand again because it belongs to him and we belong to him and anything that's in our hand is also belongs to him so father right now in the name of jesus i just lift up property anything that belongs to us that you by your mighty hand have given out of your love and your affection for us and your goodness god if there's anything that feels like it's being stolen or taken God, in any way, God, even our um, peace of mind, even our ability to have faith, even our uh, ability to know you and hear you when we read your word, God, any of it, Father, we call it back in the yes. name of Jesus. Jesus we just speak to those things and we just say, you have to take your hands off of those because my God is the owner of all things. And so right now in Jesus' name, we just take back that which belongs to our Father, that which has been given to us by his mighty outstretched right arm. We just take it back in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, for full recovery of all that's been lost in Jesus name and not just as much as has been lost but multiplied in Jesus name God that, that there's a multiplication if there's anything that feels like it's gone astray or gone away that isn't the will of the Lord then father I just ask that um, that you make sure father that there's a repayment of all those things that have been stolen 
and even even multiplied as it comes back and i just thank you father for full restoration in jesus name Um, I just wanted to speak real quick to our little daughter here that came up earlier and gave the um, testimony of the dream. And while she was talking, I was thinking that's exactly what intercession is, is where we are literally not speaking from the earth realm. We literally are approaching Father from high above. And the Lord showed, gave us, showed her that as an example because she said, she gave a prayer request, right? Is that what she saw? Her giving Father a prayer request? And that was beautiful because she gave it to Father. And that was a big, um, a big, that, that was the message today when we came into prayer. And by the way, this place is so anointed. I really, really, um, what God is doing has nothing to do with a, a person. It has to do with what's been cultivated here over the years, especially this prayer on Wednesdays, because the Lord is just very, very there. He's, he was upon our brother and um, Larry and Mary and um, um, Diana and everybody there. And the word that I kept, we kept hearing was um, to know Father, to be reconciled to Father. And, and um, I just, I, I guess I'll, I'll pray that. I don't see our sister here that gave the scripture. And, and also, Kim, if you have anything that you have in your belly to pray, because I'm, I'm glad to see you here. And I know, you know, I, not because I'm a woman, maybe because I'm a woman. I don't mean to do that. I mean, maybe. But the scripture does say that the women receive their dead back to life. He did say that. And there are a lot of ladies here tonight. And um, and so we Marys, lots of Marys around Jesus, and lots of Marys in this house. Um, I do believe that the Lord is upon us and that he's, I, 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 I'm, I invite you, Kim, to please come pray. Um, yeah, if you have something, yeah, that'd be great. been in Psalm 71 and mostly I have been connecting it for Israel but of course it ex expands outside of that too so uh, I'd like to just read that and then you know, we can just receive from it. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong refuge, to which I may resort continually, to have given the commandment to save me. You are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel men. For you are my hope, O oh Lord God. You are my trust from my youth. By you I have been upheld from birth. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall be continually of you. I've become as a wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. Father, I thank you. You are so powerful in the day of trouble. You are a deliverer. You're a savior. You're a healer. And we have come to just honor you for a finished work of the cross. We come to you with the knowing who we are standing inside of Christ. We know who we are, Jesus, our intercessor. And we look to you, God. We look to you for enemies that are too strong for us to possibly overtake, and yet you have overwhelmingly conquered. And so, God, we stand and confidently expecting you to do all that you've promised regarding being our healer, God, 
our provider, yes. the release of property. God, every word you speak is like honey. It's like treasure. It's comfort to our soul. It's strength to our bones. Yes. It's healing to our minds. It's stability to our emotions. And I really just want to thank you. God, I'm not even feeling a need to ask you to do anything that you've already done. But acknowledging you, you're so powerful in our weakness. You're a strong tower. You're a refuge. You're mighty in battle. God, thank you that you break the bows and you shatter the spears and you burn the chariots with fire. Well, we're just still. You just ask us to sit still and listen and look and hear. And so, Father, I thank you that you go before us and you fight for us. God, while well, we come together to just honor you, to, to wait for you, to learn and hear what you would say through one another. Each vessel has a place of honor, has a voice, and a way to, to, to come together. So God, I thank you. Let my mouth be filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength fails. But God, we do de declare the latter will be greater than the former that those who have sowed in tears will reap in rejoicing, that those who have labored for faithfully waiting and not losing heart, that you asked us, we would always pray, God. Thank you for the rewards that come. And from even many older people, including me, <laughs> and that are in this body, that have waited for you and not lost heart, God, because you strengthen us and you revive us and you stand with us. And for my enemies speak against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together, saying, God's forsaken him. Pursue and take him, for there is none to deliver him. Oh, God, don't be far from me. And we just, right now, we silence every mocking spirit, yes. every accusing tongue, every evil uh, contradiction to yeah. your promises and your word. And God, when we gird the loins of our mind, we hear your voice, a, str a voice of a stranger we won't hear. You've given us many promises. You've given us many comforts that delight our soul. You've lifted us up to heavenly places again and again. And even in the multitude of my anxieties within me are comforts to light my soul, God. You have strength. You have the words of eternal life, God. Yes. Your word keeps us standing on our feet. So thank you for your word. I, I bless, Lord, every word that's been spoken tonight to dwell within us richly, to bring fruit that remains, to cause us, Lord, you can cause us to remember what you've said. And in those weak moments that we need it, we pull from it, we draw from it, and we remember, God, you, you watch over your word to perform it. Yes. You look for a way to show yourself strong on behalf of those who confidently hope in you, God. So we love your word. We've come to love the strength and the promises. God, thank you. It says, I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and your salvation all the day, for I do not know their limits. And I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of your righteousness, of yours only. Oh God, you've taught me from my youth, and to this day I declare your wondrous works. Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, oh God, don't forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone who is to come. Also your righteousness, oh God, is very high, and you who have done great things, oh God, who is like you. You who have shown me great and severe troubles shall revive me again and bring me up again from the depths of the earth. You increase strength in my greatness, my comfort me on every side. Also, with the lute, I will praise you and your faithfulness, O my God. To you I will sing with the harp, O Holy One of Israel. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing to you, and my soul, which you have redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of your righteousness all the day long, for they are confounded, they are brought to shame, who seek my hurt. God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you that you have a word in season to one who's weary. And I just speak to any sad, discouraged, lonely, broken heart that you release the word in season for one who's weary. You re release hope and comfort and renewal. You recognize, Lord, that we're dust and you, you, you will not break a 
bruised reed. You will not quench a smoking flax. I just pray, pray for strength, God, new strength that we never even knew we had to move forward into this new season. And I thank you, God, that we can have joy because in your presence there is always fullness of joy. Help us to access it and release it in the atmosphere around us, God. Thank you for this uh, way that we can encourage one another. Thank you for Dylan and Karen and everybody here who shared tonight, God, that we all have received and giving the way you would honor you, Father. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. There, there was a recurring theme in the prayer meetings this morning. I was here from 7.30 till 12.30, and so I was here. <laughs> and one thing kept coming up, and it was, uh, let, me, let me read it. Romans 8. Everybody, they're pretty, pretty familiar with Romans 8. And this is <clears throat> starting with verse, uh, 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us. For the creation waits an eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope, which the Antichrist in hope that the creation itself, um, and this is Jesus' response, will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, and we're groaning, <laughs> as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves we have the first fruits of the Spirit. We have the Spirit grown inwardly. Because we have the Spirit, we groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, to the redemption of our bodies. Jesus has won all of this for us, and we wait for it to be displayed more and more in us. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is not seen is no hope at all. For who hopes what they already have, but if we hope for it, for what we do not yet have, and that's the fulfillment and the fullness of our sonship, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, and this is this is a key verse. Uh, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, for the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And then the, the big one is Romans 8, 28. Everybody knows that. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose for those God foreknew he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that we may be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. And we, we were praying and it kept coming up in, in each of the prayer sessions that we want to move into the spirit stronger, that we try to serve him under our own power, you know. We, we try hard to, to be good. We try hard to we read the word, we understand the word, and we try to apply the word in our lives. And, and God is glad that we do that. But to have victory, in what's happening now, and it's very strong antichrist spirit uh, in our politics, in our schools, in our media. I mean, I don't have to tell you that. You, you all know it. You read the newspapers. 
Lord has an answer. And um, that answer is a church that's obedient to the Holy Spirit, that's filled with the Holy Spirit so much that it replaces our um, worldly uh, way of practicing our religion. And I believe the Lord's kind of shaking is coming. Haggai 2, 2 talks about it. And then um, Hebrews repeats it and brings it into the New Testament that the church will be shaken in order to awaken us. And what is coming is a great move of the Spirit, I think. And we will be able to move in conjunction and according to the to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And then will we will be the powerful church that Satan is so afraid of. <laughs> I talked to Steve about this, Pastor Steve. He is so afraid that the church will understand its authority and its power. And we, we, we understand some of it for our own lives. I mean, I've prayed, I've seen miracles. I've had healings, two of them just recently. And uh, we see the power of God, but it's nothing like what, what the Lord wants to do through the church into the world. And the enemies don't match for, for us once we understand this. So, now to get to the prayer. <laughs> um, Lord, we want this. Yes. We want what you've been putting in our hearts all morning. And we ask for it. We ask, Lord, that you move mightily into our lives, that we can be obedient to the Holy Spirit, that we can sit like Steve's book says we can find our seat in the third heaven with Christ, a position of authority, and move that way, Lord. That we are your answer to the Antichrist spirit that's in the world today. Your church is the answer. And we want to be, and we offer ourselves, and we pray, and we pray strongly now. Lord, and, and, and you also talk about a shaking, and, and maybe it'll take that to loosen us up. I don't know, but we, we don't want to wait around for that. We want to start now in seeing your spirit move through our church, through Jubilee, our hearts, our families, and to spread throughout the body of Christ that will listen to it and become truly more than conquerors because Romans 8 also promises that we should be more than conquerors. We, we shouldn't be sheep waiting around to be slaughtered. We should be the conquerors. We should be run, running this world. And Father, we ask for it. We offer ourselves. And we give you praise. And we expect it. In Jesus' name. Thank you for sharing that testimony in the beginning. I think you stirred up faith in everybody. So sorry. <laughs> we have so many prayers. Um, but last night I heard the Lord whisper to me, and I believe it's for us, not just for me. And he said, uh, never give up. And it's, and you know, like it's familiar. When I heard it, I felt, oh, that's so right, right? And we remind each other, never give up. But, so I was happy. And then he reminded me on quite a few occasions, I gave up. And then I was like, uh-oh. Then what do you do when you gave up? Because God said, never give up. But then he said, well, actually, it's me who never gives up. Like, God never gives up on any one of us. I need you to hear this. That really helped me to not give up because knowing I know he does not give up. He does not give up on any person. He does not give up on any one of us. Everyone has struggled, and I think God is telling us he's not giving up on that in our, on our behalf. He is doing the work. So, and I knew it because he always tell me something before the church, like, so that I would come and make it interesting. 
It's the way he. That's the way he draw me. But then this morning I came like to、uh, the seven o'clock to eight o'clock before work. I would come and I was with Kim and the group and Pastor Mike was here. We were praying.、Um, do you remember for a like a, a few minutes? I don't know how long. The whole group were praying in tongue, like very very intensely. Like nobody was speaking. Nobody was distracted. Everybody was just focusing speaking tongue. And it was really good. It was something just going on, and and then after that,、um, a pastor Mike shared something, and I I was hoping he would be here today because I really want you to hear from him, him、uh, you know himself. But basically, he said he felt the heart of, of God. He felt for man. Like he he felt God. I don't know the tears. We need to we need to. There's weeping for man, for man like.、Uh, Literally, men. Okay, not not women, not mankind, but for men. Like, okay, males. So he like, he felt God heart is weeping for them, and he said,、uh, those people are his sons.、Uh, they are broken on the inside. They have no language to express. They don't know how to deal with it, and they not doing much. Feel like they don't care. I feel I just basically he's like, they got they are stuck and God is like weeping over them and we are we are supposed to pray for men, for them、pray. to be released. Yeah, pray the prayer. Yeah, I I need no. Let me share. Finish it a little bit. There's more and you're gonna like it because this is for prayer. That's why I want to share because everyone we need to join in force. We need to join in prayer, in agreement and in unity. It's not just for any particular one. I think it's for the group of men, everybody, at Jubilee or even our city,、um, our state. There's so it's in the spiritual realm. Something's holding them down right now and holding them up. But there's this thing. He's sharing this after the prayer because during the prayer in, in tongue, he received this, and then while he was sharing it, I saw a picture. And I saw like I see wall. That was after you left, like because he shared, and then you had to leave for work. And then I saw this picture. I see wall. Okay, okay. So like a big ice. Just imagine, imagine like a big iceberg. Whatever, like huge. All I could see is ice. Right? You know, it's huge, like frozen. And then, when he was praying, this prayer, weeping over man. Weeping for them, asking God to do something, to loosen, to help them. I and I, you know, just help them. I saw a spear head, like the head of the spear, and just plunge into that ice wall, like plunge right in. And so I, so I, I, what I got is that our prayer now is doing this work. It's plunging into an ice block. That's holding. That eyes represent frozen emotions of men. They don't know how to. They need to melt. Their heart needs to to have feeling again and can can feel God's love and can love like it's supposed to be. And that verse、um, that Larry just shared from Romans chapter eight, verse nineteen. Um, the creation is waiting with eager, you know, eagerly for the re- revealing of the sons of God, and those are the sons of God being held back. And what I want to say is, God is doing this, not us. God is not giving up, it's not us. And we are here doing this prayer because God want to do this, and we just holding the place. I really appreciate. You too, doing this, just holding a place, and I want to share this so that we can all pray and just,、um, just join in that that force that is、um, that is piercing into this ice block, icy block. It's huge, it's massive, but I saw when they plunge in, I saw cracks. Like that's what's happening. It's causing a crack going from like going, and so I believe. We ought to keep praying into that, and God is going to 
break that whatever you feel like frozen to. Yeah. Yeah, the man will be coming to the altar and yeah. No. We pink. Yeah. God. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank yes. you, Father God, because you never give up. It's yes. such a relief, Father God, knowing that we are not the ones holding it. But yes. God, you are the one holding us together. You are the one holding every single person, God. You never give up. You hear, you see, and you also speak. Yes. We thank you for releasing the word the vision the picture god the faith that you are pouring out yes. god release lord release into this congregation faith to believe in you lord that all things are possible with yes. you that the possibilities with you are limitless father god we thank you pour out your love pour out the faith lord that lord you're the awesome finisher of our faith we thank you for initiating this prayer we thank you for initiating this understanding and revelation yes. of what you are doing right now. Lord, we are weak, but you are strong. We thank you for you, God, that you plunge right through that uh, the, whatever the frozen icy block. You plunge, Lord, right in, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit yes. just to shatter, shatter the yes, frozen Lord. world shatter the frozenness shatter the whatever god the the thing that's holding and binding your church god holding and binding especially a man father god from receiving your love from communicating with you god from from communicating with one another father god we thank you for the revealing of the sons of god in this hour we praise you in jesus name Shake it a rato, get a bakera barato, shokuriata bahe. Get a rato, shake it a day, get a barato, shokuriata he. Get a rato, shake it a rato, shake a bakera barato, shake it a rato, shoko. Did a rato, garata, garato, wapa papa, shake a rato, shake it a rato, garato, 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 shakarato, tarato, darato, darato, cariata, bakera, roto, shake it a rata. Get a papa, get a barata, rato, shoko, roto, go. Get a bakera, bakera, barato, shoko, riata, bakera, rato, shoko, riata. Get a bakera, barato, shoko, riata, papa, shake it a Father God, we just perfume, whoa, we just perfume your throne, Lord Jesus. Father, with our love for you, Father God, we thank you, Jesus, for the men, Father. God, we come before you for the men, Father God, and I declare that that door, that ice block, that gate is wide open, Father. We just welcome you, Holy Spirit, that you would come all the more, Father, and we know there are so many prayers and requests and complications, Father, even as I try to speak sometimes, Father, and the words don't yet want to come out all the way, God. I declare, Lord Jesus, that you are restoring, Father God, just as you intended from before, Lord, we were knit together in our mother's wombs, Lord Jesus. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, Father God. And I thank you, Jesus, that as we are childlike before you, Father, how much more will you move, Lord God, when we don't have it all together, Father? We just welcome you, Holy Spirit, to perfume this room, Lord God, that as we've broken our alabaster, Lord Jesus, box at your feet, God, and you receive that perfume, Father. Yes. We know, Lord God, that you also release, Lord Jesus, and we thank you, Father God, for what you're releasing over this place, Lord Jesus. Father, and I just thank you for the women, Lord Jesus, behind me, Lord Jesus. Lord God, that they are like, they're the spearhead, Lord Jesus, that oftentimes, Lord, they fight battles. Whoa, on our behalf, God. And I thank you for the covering over them and their family, Father. And I thank you that your yoke is easy, God. And that as they carry us, Lord Jesus, in warfare, Father God, it's easy, God. And we bless them, Jesus. And we thank you for them, Lord, in this house, Father God. In Jesus' yes. name, amen. Yes. Amen. I had a lot to share. I know it's super late, so I'm just going to pray for the mouth of women to open. 
I'm praying for the voices in this room. And I'm praying for the utterance. I'm praying for the mouths that are full because they're open. The hearts that are overflowing, causing the mouths to open. I thank you for raising up the mama bears. Oh, let these ones begin to roar again. Every move of God has had a prayer movement, but you couldn't find a specific prayer movement in the 60s and 70s that led to the Jesus revolution. But it was mama bears broken apart because they saw what the culture took over and it captivated and it put spells and it mesmerized and hypnotized their youth, their children. And they were crippled and bound. And they were without the ability to function. And suddenly there was an eruption and you broke out through these ones that were crying out for their own and began to cry out for others. And I thank you as the hearts of men are being defrosted in this fiery, glorious baptism that the mouth of women are opening simultaneous and the baptism of fire upon the hearts of men are causing the ignition switch to go into a place where there is overdrive and there is a revealing right now of what has been through covenant union, through the breaking in right now of the hearts of men as the mouths of women open, the eruption, the volcanic explosion. I thank you for the great release, for the thunderous boom, for the great awakening coming forth right now that there are men of valor that will be valiant warriors and they will war for their own and the women that have held down the fort and carried the burden of the Lord the travailing intercessors would begin to open their mouth and make decrees and proclamations and watch these ones that are in harm's way that are that there is foul play that there is great, great darkness that has been plotted against and watch an entire generation rescue. Oh, there are so many that are worried about their net worth, but we decree that on the other side of the boat is a net that's going to be dropped, that's going to reel in an end time harvest, and I thank you it's going to be through the baptism of fire upon men and the mouths of women opening and the proclamation and the declaration through covenant union and that there would be a baptism of fire that would rivet the very hearts of men in the name of Jesus. I thank you that the God of Daniel is the God that baptizes by fire from the very throne. The throne, there is a fire that proceeds from the throne. Oh, God of Daniel, erupt with a fiery throne, a flaming fire. Oh, God of Jeremiah, come with the fire and the bone marrow. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, fourth man in the fire. Oh, I thank you for the tongues of fire. Oh, the baptism of fire, that there's an angel that has tongue. Oh, there are coals coming. There's a purging coming. Oh, in the midst of unclean lips. Oh, in the midst of perversity, you're bringing a new speech. Oh, you're bringing purity. Oh, you're bringing the beauty of holiness. Oh, we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. I thank you for the reverberation tonight. I thank you for the catalyst tonight. I thank you for the rocks skipping on the water tonight. Oh, I thank you for the rock breaking open and pouring out water. I thank you for the soles of feet walking upon water. I thank you for the arm of the King of Glory extended 
His arm is never too short. His ears always inclined. He's not deaf and he's not dumb. And every deaf and dumb spirit I speak to you now, and I command Ephatha, open up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you for that. That was awesome. We needed that. I was waiting on you to come do that. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so, Father, I just thank you that you heard every single prayer, that you've touched every single one of us tonight, Father, in our households, Lord. We seal everything you've done tonight, Father. We love you and bless you and honor you for your presence and for being among us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.